Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a great week this week and hopefully some of you have maybe seen some squirrels. My name's Kaylee, and I'm the Communications and Engagement Officer for Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels. We were sent in this lovely garden footage from one of our volunteers, Lewis Wilde. So thank you very much, Lewis, if you are joining us this morning. We thought it would be nice to share this footage with those who um, maybe haven't been able to get outside much this week or if you haven't been able to get out looking for squirrels or even just as a little bit of inspiration for the weekend that we have ahead of us. So all of this week, we've been calling on people across Scotland to explore outdoors on the lookout for both red and gray squirrels and to tell us what they've seen as part of the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey. Now, that could be exploring a local park, local woodland, or even just spending some time watching the wildlife in your own garden, like we are this morning. For anyone taking part in the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey, if you have spotted any squirrels this week, be sure to report those over on our website, and that's at scottishsquirrels.org.uk, and it only takes a quick moment to report those and it really does help us know what squirrels are up to across Scotland. Oh, here we go. It looks like we've got our first red of the morning. We've had lots of photos sent into us during lockdown of these stick on window feeders. So I think people have been really enjoying watching the wildlife up close, particularly when they've not been able to get outside as much as normal during lockdown. Wow, what a jump that was. So this footage was sent in to us from Lewis's back garden in Castle Douglas which is in Dumfries and Galloway, where he's a member of the newly established Castle Douglas and District Red Squirrel Group. Now, a number of these volunteer-led squirrel groups have been forming across the south of Scotland to help protect their local populations of red squirrels in the south. And these groups also fall under the banner of the Red Squirrel Forum for South Scotland, so if you live in southern Scotland and would like to find out more about how you can help protect red squirrels in, in your local area, it's definitely worth having a visit over to our network directory on our website where we've got a list of all of our volunteer-led groups um, and there's a map there so you can find one that is closest to you. The Castle Douglas and District Red Squirrel Group, which Lewis is a member of, covers the communities of Castle Douglas, Parton, Springholm, Crockettford, uh, Kirkpatrick Durham, Gelston, and pretty much everywhere in between as well. And although red squirrels are known to be doing quite well in these areas, they are coming under increasing threat from non-native grey squirrels and do really need our help. So grey squirrels are unfortunately outcompeting reds for food and resources and they do carry a virus called squirrel pox which is deadly to red squirrels but grey squirrels can carry unaffected and it's because of this virus that it is really important to clean and disinfect garden wildlife feeding stations like this one 
regularly. Um, so if you have red visitors, definitely try and clean those regularly. And um, also very important is if you live in an area of both red and gray squirrel overlap, it's quite important not to encourage the two to come into close contact with supplementary feeding in your garden. So just a couple of things to think of if, if you are considering putting garden feeders up. We're lucky to have lots of birds at the feeder this morning as well, which are also great to, uh, to see up close. That's one of the benefits as well of taking part in the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey is there's lots of other wildlife that you might come across while you're exploring or watching from your window. The Castle Douglas and District Red Squirrel Group, which we've been talking a little bit about this morning, are working to develop a network of active volunteers in their area who are carrying out um, monitoring activities, raising public awareness, engaging with local communities, landowners, and also undertaking grey squirrel control activities as well, all to help protect red squirrels in their local area. So there really are lots of different ways for anyone to become involved and help do their part for red squirrels. Sightings reported from the area will also help um, groups like this to monitor their conservation efforts that they're undertaking. And um, they also help us to see across the whole of Scotland where reds are most under threat and most need our help. So a really simple way to get involved wherever you are based, um, even if you're outside of one of our project areas, um, one of the easiest things that you can do is simply report your sightings to us. So the sightings we receive from the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey, um, they will help us create a quite clear snapshot of the current situation on the ground, which is incredibly helpful for us this year in particular, you know, being our extra eyes and ears on the ground as um, we had the temporary suspension of field work earlier this year. So we really are just trying to catch up on what the current picture is at the moment. So the camera's been shifted slightly and it looks like we have another red here now. This one looks quite different from the first visitor with more developed ear tufts and also quite a bit of a paler tail by the looks of things. Oh, and that was another one running by. So red squirrels can vary greatly in colour from being really quite ginger and saturated to a more muted grey or a quite dark brown or almost blackish colour. It can be really hard to know how many different squirrels are visiting a garden throughout a year as although they can be quite different looking at any one time um, this changes when they molt, so they can look almost completely different um, just a few months later. So red squirrels molt twice a year, um, and right now is when squirrels will be starting to develop those lovely, cosy winter coats as the weather turns colder. So you'll start to notice more often um, red squirrels developing their ear tufts from, from here on out, which is that kind of iconic uh, feature of a red squirrel, which grey squirrels don't develop at all throughout the year. So if you're ever stuck identifying the two, certainly in the colder months, um, always look out for ear tufts and that's a really easy giveaway. 
but if you're struggling for color in particular, if you've just caught a quick glimpse, generally red squirrels tend to be much smaller in size, much more kind of petite features, um, whereas a, a gray squirrel can be almost double the size of a red squirrel and, and is much more um, bulky looking overall. They also tend to have a pale fringe around the tail of a grey squirrel. So we almost describe it as a kind of whitish halo that you can see around their tail. Whereas red squirrels tend to have more of a one solid colour of tail. So like this one we can see here, it's got quite a pale tail, but that seems pretty consistent throughout its tail as opposed to having this kind of banded fringe. If you do have regular visitors to your garden, these only need to be reported to us once or twice a year just to keep us updated. Um, but definitely report any changes, particularly if you see a different species of squirrel entering your garden that hadn't previously been there. That's really great to let us know about that. So if you have visitors popping up this week that you, you haven't reported to us recently, please do pop those in as part of the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey and that would be a really big help to see what's what's happening in gardens across Scotland. So this red squirrel is quite happily um, munching away on um, some food at the moment. Um, so just talking a little bit about what red squirrels like to eat. They are definitely specialist um, tree seed feeders. It's their speciality. So favorites are, for example, hazelnuts, um, yew seed, elm seed, and um, the seeds of pine, spruce, and larch cones as well are some of their favorites. Um, they also eat things like fungi, uh, fresh leaves and flower shoots, uh, the fruits of some shrub trees. Um, and they've also been known at times to um, sometimes eat birds, birds' eggs and insects, but um, most often you'll see them going for, for cones out and about in the woods. Red squirrels are also really smart, so they can tell if a nut is good or bad, um, even before they open it just by its smell. Um, so they're incredibly smart little creatures. If you are feeding red squirrels in your garden, um, the best food for them is a good mix of nuts with a bit of fruit, um, such as apple, um, maybe a bit of cuttlefish bone or an antler. Um, and that makes sure that they're getting all the nutrients that they need, um, particularly a calcium boost from things like cuttlefish and, and antler are really good for squirrels as well. We also have some more information about supplementary feeding over on our website too, if you wanted to have a little look at that in more detail. Um, something to bear in mind though is that um, it's called supplementary feeding for a reason, so it should never become a, a food source that squirrels become dependent on. Um, it's just something to give them a little extra boost when they need it, but um, definitely shouldn't be put out too, too regularly for them to become dependent on it. You can also leave out um, water for squirrels and other wildlife if it's um, particularly warm or if we're going into a cold snap. It's uh, quite good for them to have a, a water source out if they are coming to the garden to feed. Well, this little red seems to be having quite the feast this morning, getting in a big breakfast. It's another big jump there.
Now, if you do live in Dumfries and Galloway, Juliana Sinclair, our community engagement officer for the area, gave a really good talk yesterday on an update on red squirrels in the area and the various activities taking place among local communities. Um, so it's definitely worth a catch up if you live locally and you didn't you didn't catch that um, talk in person. You can catch up on any of the events that we've been doing and the live streams that we've done throughout this week over on our YouTube channel if you have missed those and you want to find out a little bit more. Hopefully we'll see one or two other reds just before wrapping up for today, but we'd love to hear about what you've been seeing. So do pop us a note in the comments if you've been taking part in the survey this week and um, what you've seen, we'd love to know. There's also still plenty time to join, so it runs all throughout this weekend too and any squirrels reported between the 21st and 27th of September can be submitted as part of the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey. So there's still a little bit of time after this week to report what you've seen. So if you have a busy weekend and you've not had a chance to log those on the website, don't worry too much. As long as they're in for the date that you saw them, um, then that's a really big help in, in contributing to the survey. Likewise, if you'd like to find out some more information about the Castle Douglas local group, where these lovely red squirrels have been filmed from, then I'll pop the details up on screen of where to get in contact with them so that you can find out more about what's happening locally. I'm certainly very jealous of Lewis's garden visitors and for most of us in Scotland seeing res this close is quite rare but if you decide to venture a little further afield this weekend it is worth keeping an eye out looking up in the trees for movement or down at the ground for any signs of squirrels such as chewed cones or squirreled mushrooms or even little paw prints in the mud. You just never know what you'll come across. If you are looking for ideas of where to go this weekend, we have an interactive sightings map on our website. And this is where the public have reported sightings of both red and grey squirrels on the map. And it's where any sightings reported from the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey will also pop up on the map. It's a little red or a little grey dot. So this map is a really great place to look um, to give you an indication of where squirrels might have been seen in an area before or if they haven't been seen. Of course, for us, it's equally important to explore areas where squirrels haven't been seen before. And like I said, you just never know where they might turn up. This is particularly useful for us too in getting better visibility of what's happening outside of our key project areas as well. It's also important to remember that both red and grey squirrel sightings are equally important as each other in terms of reporting what you've seen. Although red squirrel sightings can be really exciting, grey squirrel sightings are really crucial in helping us monitor control efforts and keep an eye on any new areas where red squirrels could be um, becoming more vulnerable with time.
Each sighting that is sent in to us gets verified by a conservation officer too. Um, so each and every one that gets sent in, we've got a big task of checking them all, um, making sure there's not one that's accidentally popped up in the map in the wrong place. Um, so those will all be checked. So all the sightings from the Great Scottish Coral Survey will be checked over probably by a, a conservation officer um, before we publish the results of, of what's been happening this week. Um, but so far, it's been a really great one. And thank you very much to everyone that's submitted a sighting so far. Um, we've just been blown away by your support and how much you've been getting out, what you've been seeing. It has been really, really helpful so far. Um, so this weekend, oh, we've got one final red. Here we go. So yes, this weekend is, is the final push of the survey um, and is a great time to get out and about, explore outdoors, and hopefully um, you'll see a red or a grey squirrel. And if you do, please tell us about it. Um, we'd love to hear what you've seen on your adventures. And I think with that last red squirrel sighting um that was a nice little boost at the end there so i think we'll wrap up there um but i want to wish everyone happy squirrel spotting this weekend and if you do see anything you can report those to scottishsquirrels.org.uk